Welcome back to the Bible Reading Project. It is the third week in 2021. We're hoping to inspire you to read your Bible every single day. Zero excuse. And we hope it's working. How are you doing? Are you working at okay reading all the time? Uh, Can yeah. I say something real quickly? Okay. I feel like you're not as spiritual this week. What happened? Um, well, we talked to somebody and they said that we banter too much. So I'm trying to keep it very vanilla. Okay. Now I'm going to ask a couple of personal questions before we jump into the Psalms. Okay. Mm. So just personal. Will you answer honestly? Of course. Okay. First, last week we know you went to Washington, D.C. to be part of the radicalized patriots who are storming the Capitol. Yeah. Were you close to the Capitol? Um, kind of close. How kind of close? Like you were close, close. Yeah, I was on the steps. You were on the actual of. steps of the Capitol with radicalized patriots that mm -hmm. were storming the Capitol to take over the United States of America, <laughs> yeah. and you're in the middle of it. Yeah, no, that's kind of a... So just give me a 30-second synopsis. What was it like? Because I see what I see on TV, right? And it literally was like World War Three. Mm -hmm. We're taking over the world. We're going to take over the capital. We're going to, and I'd just like to hear you were actually there. I was actually there. All right, just give me a thirty seconds. I wasn't there, like when they were like doing the pushing back of the police and tearing down. Okay, stuff. I wasn't there. I was like a block away. Okay, at that point. But when I did get up there, um, it wasn't violent or mean or anything okay. it was just people cool. were frustrated that they feel they feel like they were cheated out of something that uh -huh. was rightfully theirs okay cool fun did you enjoy it yeah it was a lot of fun yeah kind of historical i guess yeah like i don't in all my years don't remember when people have stormed the capitol and <laughs> sat in the speaker's office you yeah know? right but cool well i'm glad you're back i'm glad to be you back. were with two to three million people you mm -hmm. came back without corona or no and I don't have Corona. Okay, good. So glad you're yeah, back we were... safe. You look different. Do like, I? Uh -huh. You like your dress kind of cool. Got North Face, which is cutting <laughs> edge, sort of. And a cool, is that a new hat or the same hat? Um, It's a different hat. Okay. I've had awesome. it for a couple of weeks. Second question. Okay. All right. Glad you're back, by the way, and safe. <laughs> Thank All right. you. Second question. We found out today that some people don't like our Bible reading project. Yeah. Because we banter back and forth too much. People close to your heart. And we're not my wife, yeah. actually. Now, <laughs> so let's talk about my wife, who yeah. I asked today at lunch. She doesn't even watch the Bible Reading Project because mm -hmm. she says, it's just too silly for me. Right. And so we decided maybe we could be more serious. Mm -hmm. And then we both were miserable and decided, <laughs> no, we were not going to be yeah. serious. We we're going to be us. Because right. that's what you said. It's more authentically us. Yeah. So my wife never watches it. So somebody close to you, your mom, is your mom like it? I think she likes it. Okay. She watches it. You think you could call her and let's just see? Mm -hmm. Call her real quick. Okay. Because my wife says, I, I'm okay that you guys do it, but I don't watch it because it's silly to me. Mm -hmm. Y'all should just read the Bible. And then we're like, well, so this is mom. Let's this just see mom. if your mother likes it. Yeah. I'd like to hear her thought. Hello. Hey, mom. Hey, mom. <laughs> hey, hello. Hey, here. That's Pastor Mark. We're, happy New Year. Yeah, happy New Year to you too. Um, we're filming the Bible reading project right now, so say hello to everybody. Are you joking me? <laughs> <laughs> no. Can I ask you a question? Okay. So, so my wife today uh, enlightened me and Ryan that. She doesn't even watch the Bible reading project because she thinks Ryan and I are just a little too silly. We should just only read the Bible and get with it. So I said, well, let's call your mom because we really respect you. And let's just get your opinion of do you watch the Bible reading project and do you think we're cool? Oh, I think you're very cool. <laughs> nice. I, watch every, I watch it every day. Awesome. <laughs> and, and so you like it when me and Ryan banter back and forth. Yeah, I think it's I think it's um I think it's pretty fun and engaging and makes me uh take notice of, of what you're saying even more. Hey guess what apply it to apply it to real life. Guess what? I'm gonna send you some free coffee because we love you now. We're gonna make you the official mascot of the Bible reading project. We love you. There you go. Hurry back and there come see go. us. We miss you. I will do that. <laughs> Say bye to your mom. Bye, mom. Bye. Love you.
oh, I love her already. <laughs> Me and your mom are like that now. <laughs> right? Right. And it's so cool how yeah. somebody just doesn't like us at all. Right. Somebody else says they love us. They so love shout us. out to you, Mom. We love you. It's Monday. She loves you. Guess what? Psalm 11 is going to be a fun it week is. this week. Can I sport me a hat, too? I think you should. You got me one. I think you look cool. I'm going to grab yeah. mine. I'm going to wear it all week. I'm I not a hat should. guy, but right. but I love the fact that you thought about me. You got me a matching hat. You know why I did? Why? Because Does when I came, okay? it looks great. Okay. You got to bend the bill a little. No. Okay. I like it. I like the hip look. <laughs> <laughs> because I came into your office about five times this happened, mm -hmm. and he said, oh, I like your hat. Did mm -hmm. you get me one? Mm -hmm. I said, no. Then he made me feel bad through I manipulation. Did. I did. And that happened in about five times. And I thought, you hadn't done it in a few months, but I thought for Christmas, I'll get him a hat. Thank you. And then I did. Thank you. Psalm 11, let's jump right in. Let's read. It, it's kind of a telling uh, today okay. on a Monday because it's going to speak right to what we're living in right now. And it's going to be a great week. Here we go. Verse one, I trust in the Lord for protection. So why do you say to me? Fly like a bird to the mountains for safety. The wicked are stringing their bows and fitting their arrows on the bowstrings. They shoot from the shadows at those whose hearts are right. The foundations of law and order have collapsed. What can the righteous do? But the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord still rules from heaven. He watches everyone closely, examining every person on the earth. The Lord examines both the righteous and the wicked. He hates those who love violence. He will rain down blazing coals and burning sulfur on the wicked, punishing them with scorching winds. For the righteous Lord loves justice. The virtuous will see his face. Amen. Woo! That's kind of... That's kind of speaks right now to where we are, yeah. uh, that, that God is my protection. But I love what it says here, uh, verse 3, the foundations of law and order have collapsed. Yeah. What can the righteous do? Right. So I want to ask you that question. We're in a weird time, right? Mm -hmm. yep. You were up there in the middle of it. Like on the news, it's like, oh, my God, you know, the these radicalized patriots are taking over. All right. But then there's 70-plus million people are like, no, we're not radicalized patriots. Mm -hmm. We're just sick of big government. And yeah. But there's, it, however you look at it, mm -hmm. whatever side you fall on, there is a big divide in our nation today. And Christians are getting caught in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Like, what do we do as Christians? Do we fight for politics? Do we go up to Washington and storm the Capitol? Do we... Uh, do we get involved? Do we post about it? All the stuff that's going on. Like what can, in your mind, how old are you? 30, what? 31. 31 years old. So, and you, you love Jesus, you live for Jesus. Yeah. But, you know, beyond just, I'm going to share a meme, I'm going to share another meme of something that's funny, or how do you think young Christians today can actively get involved when he says, hey, when the foundations of law and order are collapsing, what can we do? And if you watch the news right now, I mean, it just depends on where you land, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to censor us. They're going to cut us off. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have Twitter and Instagram. What are we going to do? What is the church going to do? What if they shut us down? How do you answer that? What do you think young Christians can do today, your generation can do to to live out the kingdom in a generation where wickedness and politics and censorship seemingly can run high. Yeah. How do you, how do you think you practically live it out? I think there's one of two ways, either one, Oh, well, what was me and go hide and sit in a corner and pout, um, and just shut your mouth so that you don't get censored anymore. You don't get slandered anymore. Or you, because I'll, I'm a Christian, so I need to, and I don't want to, ruin the gospel for anybody or um you step up and you speak out more and you continue to do what god called you to do and lead the charge and move forward and i know that the argument comes that well as a christian you're of the kingdom of god you're not of the world so you should have nothing to do with politics but i think if that argument is true then then christians have no effect on culture because politics set the standard of culture mm. And so if you don't want to have any influence on culture, then yeah, don't, don't be informed and sure. don't, in my opinion, that's my opinion, don't participate in any form of, of politics mm -hmm. and just, well, you, you just kind of go with the wind at that point. And for me personally, that 
that's just not where I, I don't see myself. So what, how do you, what is your personal action? What is your action point in a generation where politics is such a hot topic? Mm -hmm. How do you, as a spirit filled believer, how do you practically apply it into your life? What do you do practically to engage the conversations or to present your faith? Yeah, I think um, for me personally, um, I stay informed and okay. I take in the information. I pray about it and discern what is true and what's not. And there's a lot of information out there. We live in the last days. We're promised that that would be the case. So take all the information, discern what is godly, what is not. And then... For me personally, my personality, I don't hunt down the conversations. I don't talk about um, things unless somebody asks me and they come to me with mm -hmm. it or someone in my 50 feet talks about something and I say, and I, then I'll interject the mm -hmm. truth. But I don't, I'm not the confrontational guy. I'm not going out and telling everybody my opinion. Sure. But if it comes to me, then I'm informed and I can speak right. wisdom to it. So, how do you handle the naysayers, the people that are on the opposite end of the spectrum as you? Mm -hmm. Do you enjoy those conversations? Do you like engaging people who believe differently than you yeah. about politics or Jesus? And how do you handle that? Yeah, so a good example is um, an older lady. Mm -hmm. uh, her name is Miss Pam. Mm -hmm. And politically, totally the opposite. Mm -hmm. um, we disagree on a lot of things. But she'll call me sometimes and say, mm -hmm. well, I respect you. You're smart. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What's going on? What mm -hmm. do you think about this? And I'll tell her. And she's like, I disagree. You know, she sure. called me. Sure. Like, oh, I totally disagree. But at the end of the day, what we settle on is we're both believers. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we're both believers and we're both Americans. And we have that in common. And so what me and Miss Pam settled on is we can disagree. Mm -hmm. But uh, what we try to do is focus on what we have in common more, mm -hmm. and then the differences will just work themselves out. Sure. Yeah, where I land is that I'm, I'm comfortable in what I believe. Right. I don't mind telling people what I believe, yeah. but I try to be a smart enough fella that I let other people believe what they want to believe. And I don't beat them over the head if they don't think exactly. like I think or believe like I think. But I'm very comfortable in a room to tell somebody what I believe. Right. And and I feel in my heart that I can stand on it. And if they totally oppose or totally don't like it, I'm to I'm good. I, I'm not mad at anybody. I, and I, matter of fact, I like it when somebody passionately stands for what they believe. I agree. Even if it's wrong yeah. in, in my thinking or right. I'm wrong in their thinking, right. I like to know if somebody believes it that passionately, yeah. uh, I like you to be able to back it up. Right. Not just, oh, yeah, you know, that kind of argument, yeah. but really back it up with facts. And so how what I've done politically, I love politics. I love being in the middle of it. But I also go to that not everybody may feel called to it, but you have to do your 50 feet. Mm -hmm. Some people feel called to get in the middle of it, and right. some people feel called not to. But whatever you do, you need to be owning your 50 feet for Jesus, right? You need right. to be willing to engage your 50 feet. And if that's have political conversations or relational conversations, whatever those would be, even sports, whatever it would be. So I kind of land on just own your 50 feet for Christ. Right. And if that is you're in the political sphere or sports or whatever, just do it well and know what you believe and be able to defend your faith. And uh, therefore, I think it, it lends itself for a much better kingdom of being out there, uh, you know, to share what we believe right. without, gosh, what, always having to nitpick and argue it, you yeah. know, and violently argue it, so right. to speak. Yeah, what I landed, what I landed on is, any comfort conversation where it's my opinion versus somebody else's opinion, I just landed on in the moment of giving opinions that I'm never going to change somebody's sure. mind. Right. That that's not my job anyway. Sure. In any situation, it's not my. That's the Holy Spirit's job is sure. to change somebody's mind. And so if I go into it knowing I'm never going to change their mind, I'm just going to plant a seed of truth. Yeah. Then um, I come away much much better. That's awesome. It's going to be a great week. I look forward to it. Got a, a surprise guest this week. Yeah. A lot of great things we're doing. So, hey, in your life, as you're living it, whether you're in the middle of the politics or wh wherever you find yourself, our encouragement to you is just represent your 50 feet really well for Jesus Christ. And by that, I mean this, be bold and be biblical. And uh, we can make a difference in the kingdom of God. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow.